Hi there, Dan from onlinebasecourses.com here. I'm just quickly going to take you through that slap groove just to show you some of the techniques going on. It's quite a tricky little groove there. So I'll show you exactly how I'm doing it. I'm playing a 1975 Fender Jazz here, pickups both fully on, DR strings, and I'm recording it into Logic with an Avalon U5 and a really cool handmade tube preamp made by Jules Potter in America. It's called a Jules Monique. So I'm just blending two signals, those two signals together just to get quite a nice slap sound. So I'm just going to very quickly take you through each of these bars and it does pay attention it does pay to pay attention to the left hand fingering, which is the little numbers you see by the notes. If your hand size is, everyone's hand size is different, so if you find a better way to play it, so for example if you want to use your third finger instead of your fourth as I'm saying, then feel free, but do in general pay attention to these fingerings I've got here. So just very quickly, the P stands for pop, which is that, and the S for the slap, although that's sometimes notated as a T. And the little crosses are ghost notes, which are just when you don't apply any pressure with your left hand. It's really important in slap, you get really cool percussive effects with ghost notes. So the first bar goes. So you've got this little left hand pat here. And I think it it's a really good idea just to take anything that's difficult to play like this, just to take tiny, tiny little bits of it and try and master that, so... Maybe just that. Now my right hand is kind of a bit like you might see a guitarist strum. And just keep this constant motion going. With slap, I find it's often a good idea to think about that when you're you're not going in this direction, you're sort of more going this sort of down and up direction. Just watch this a second. So I'm just really in that constant motion groove kind of thing. So that's what I'm doing here. Now that's where I'm using first finger, second finger, fourth finger. That's one of the places where you might want to use your third finger. But down this end of the bass, very often, it's absolutely fine not to use that one finger per fret. It just falls slightly easy under the little finger there. So, I'll do a, a very quick sort of hand shift going to the seventh fret of the D string, which is the A, and you've got... So I'm going little finger here, and you've got this octave going down. With a ghost note. Again, keeping that constant motion thing going on. So, so far... By the way, that groove you heard in the background earlier on was just uh, just a loop I got from Logic. Um, so it it's a good idea to just play along to a drum beat just to keep yourself in time. You can really, really slow this down or play at half time. So it's um, half time would be. When you want to play anything fast, bizarrely enough, you really need to slow it right down just to give your brain and your hands the time just to get everything together. So bar three is exactly the same as bar one. And then you've got this really cool 16th note triplet. That's what that uh, funny symbol there is. So I'll just do this really slowly because it's quite tricky. So you've got first finger on the seventh fret of the G string with a pop, followed by a left hand, I'm doing this with my little finger, left hand hammer on. So my hand's coming up, my right hand's coming up, and then I'm coming down for this ghost note, and then back up again. So it's that constant motion thing I was trying to explain earlier. And immediately, you finish with the ninth fret, there's another little 
sort of micro shift down to the fifth fret of the A string with a th thumb on the right hand. And again, that's a hammer on. So all this kind of fast kind of slap stuff it's based on kind of tricks really. You've got hammer-ons, pull-offs, ghost notes, these kind of things to get down. So you've got two hammer-ons there. One with a thumb, fret five to seven on the A string immediately, followed by five to seven on the D string. Another ghost note. And then finally, a pop on the fifth fret of the D string and just a little bit of a vibrato there. And you want to try and get every note as smooth as possible. The idea is just for this to groove. That's one of the most important things that you can do as a bass player is to play in time and with loads of feel and groove. So to do that you need to practice loads of the metronome, drum machine, real drummer, and just really slow down just to get your technique really good. If your technique is really, really good, then that is the vehicle to get your groove going, really. If you're struggling with the technique, then that, that will be a bit of a barrier to playing anything well, okay? So play really, really slowly, and that should get you playing this in no time. So the whole thing, slow. Then with the drum beat once more. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that really quick lesson. If there's uh, any questions you have, just uh, comment below and I'll get back to you. This. Um the music can be downloaded at uh, www.onlinebasscourses.com. I'll put a link below in the notes. And uh, yeah, you can download the music there along with uh, loads of other lessons that I've got and player profiles and great bass albums to listen to, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I want to hear from you. If there's anything you want me to, to teach or explain, let me know.